Welcome to the cardiovascular system. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how blood circulates through your body and some of the basic anatomy that keeps this system running. Let's start with an overview of blood flow. When blood leaves the heart, it travels through a tube called an artery. Arteries have thick walls and high pressure. If we follow the artery, it will lead to smaller and smaller branches called arterioles, which eventually lead to something called a capillary. Capillaries have the smallest tubes with very thin walls that are only one cell layer thick. This makes it so blood in the nearby cells can swap stuff, like oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients, and waste. After blood leaves a capillary, it enters a venule, which then merges together with other venules to form veins. Veins carry blood back to the heart. You can think of arteries as the blood delivery system and veins as the return service. Even though this diagram shows arteries as red and veins as blue, this isn't always the case. Sometimes we'll have blue arteries and red veins. What determines an artery versus a vein is the direction of blood flow. We'll talk more about what color means later. The term blood vessel applies to any of these tubes that carry blood outside of the heart. I've drawn just a single blood vessel to and from the capillary, but in real life, these blood vessels branch a lot. This is a human foot with plastinated blood vessels. You can see the large main arteries running down the leg, but there are literally thousands of tiny branches coming off of them. If you were to take all the blood vessels in your body and lay them end to end, not only would you be dead, but the blood vessels would wrap around the entire earth twice. That's a lot of blood vessels. If we were to draw a map of blood flow, it might look something like this. Notice that we have two loops or circuits, one that goes to the lungs and one that goes to the body. The loop that goes from the heart to the lungs is called the pulmonary circuit, and the loop that goes from the heart to the body is called the systemic circuit. Pulmonary means relating to the lungs, and systemic means anything outside the lungs, so things like muscles, bones, kidneys, your brain, your stomach, anything that's outside of the lungs. As blood circulates, it is going to alternate back and forth between the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. Let's start in the heart and follow some blood flow. Blood is going to leave the heart in an artery and travel to the lungs. Then it will go through a vein back to the heart. And from there it will leave the heart in an artery to go somewhere in the body. Then it will travel through a vein back to the heart. When blood travels to the lungs, it picks up the oxygen you inhale. It can then distribute that oxygen throughout your body. When blood is in the body, it also picks up waste like carbon dioxide and carries it back to the lungs for you to exhale. It can then pick up more oxygen and the cycle repeats. You've probably noticed that we've drawn some blood vessels in red and some in blue. The red represents blood vessels with high levels of oxygen. Blue represents blood vessels with low levels of oxygen. The red blood vessels carry oxygenated blood from the lungs to the body, and the blue blood vessels carry deoxygenated blood from the body to the lungs. Remember that arteries carry blood away from the heart, and veins carry blood to the heart. This means that in the systemic circuit, arteries will be red and veins will be blue. In the pulmonary circuit, however, it's the opposite. Arteries carry deoxygenated blood and are blue. Veins carry oxygenated blood and are red. Do we really have blue blood? Let's take a look. On the right is a syringe with oxygenated blood, and on the left is a syringe with deoxygenated blood. The deoxygenated blood is, well, it's not blue, but it is a darker shade of red. Some people might appear to have blue veins in their wrists and the legs, but this is because of the way light is absorbed and reflected by the skin, not actually by the color of the blood. 
Even though in real life all human blood is red, we usually color blood vessels as red or blue in diagrams just to make them easier to interpret. Okay, it's pretty cool that our heart can control blood flow in two different circuits, but how does it actually do that? Well, to answer that question, we're going to need to update our heart diagram. We're looking at our upgraded heart from the front. Notice that it has two sides, a right side and a left side. In anatomy, right and left are always determined by the patient's right and left. Just like in our blood flow diagram, the right side is colored blue and the left side is colored red. The right side of the heart carries deoxygenated blood and the left side carries oxygenated blood. The two sides of the heart are separated by a wall of muscle. This keeps the deoxygenated and the oxygenated blood separated. The right side of the heart is going to receive blood from the body and pump it to the lungs. The left side of the heart will receive blood from the lungs and then pump it to the body. Both sides of the heart are working simultaneously to circulate your blood. Notice that the two sides of our heart also have a top and a bottom half. The two top halves are called atria and the two bottom halves are called ventricles. Together, these make the four chambers of a human heart, the right atrium and right ventricle, and the left atrium and left ventricle. Let's follow a drop of blood through the heart. The right atrium will receive deoxygenated blood from veins. Most of this blood will passively flow into the right ventricle through an open one-way valve. When the atrium contracts, it forces some extra blood to fill the ventricle. The ventricle can then contract and push the blood through a second valve into the pulmonary artery. The blood will then travel to the lungs and receive oxygen. Then the blood will travel through a pulmonary vein and return to the heart in the left atrium. Again, most of this blood will passively flow into the left ventricle through an open valve. The atrium will contract and cause extra filling to occur. The left ventricle can then contract and push the blood through another valve into an artery and it goes out to the body. In the body, the blood will lose its oxygen and then travel back to the right atrium in a vein. Whew, that was a lot of information. All right, let's go through it again. Right atrium, right ventricle, lungs, left atrium, left ventricle, body. Right atrium, right ventricle, lungs, left atrium, left ventricle, body. The last thing we're going to look at is the four one-way valves. Blood flowing from the right atrium to the right ventricle will pass through the tricuspid valve and blood flowing from the left atrium to the left ventricle will pass through the mitral valve, otherwise known as the bicuspid valve. Together, the tricuspid and mitral valves are known as the atrioventricular valves because they separate the atria and the ventricles. Blood leaving the right ventricle will pass through the pulmonary valve, and blood leaving the left ventricle will pass through the aortic valve. Together, the pulmonary and aortic valves are also known as the semilunar valves. The closing of these valves are what make the doob doob sound of a heartbeat. When the atrioventricular valves close, it makes the first doob sound. And when the semilunar valves close, it makes the second doob sound. Doob doob, doob doob. These four valves open and close in response to pressure so that blood only flows in a forward direction. And with that, there you have it, folks. You now have a basic understanding of the difference between arteries and veins, pulmonary and systemic circuits, and the incredible heart that circulates blood between them.